Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another Rocket Matter produced Legal Fuel Florida Bar CLE. Whew, that's, a, that's a mouthful. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Lisa Pansini. I am the creative manager here at Rocket Matter. And today it is my pleasure to introduce our guest host, MK Gettler, who is the director of marketing for BirdEye. Uh, so BirdEye, and I'll let her uh, explain it a little bit, but just so you know, BirdEye is one of our fantastic integration partners, and they enable businesses to get new reviews and capture existing customer sentiment from review sites and social media, net promoter scores. So they are the experts in online reviews. So without further ado, I'll let her, uh, you know, tell, her, tell you a little bit about herself and we'll get started with the CLE. MK, take it away. Hello, hello, Lisa, thank you so much for the warm welcome and introduction. For those of you that are joining today, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to spend about an hour, we're gonna do our best to spend about an hour together um, and give you all the insights you might need to be able to accelerate the growth of your law firm. So as I was researching our presentation today, I came across this stat about um, your clients and or prospective clients and how they are finding law firms like yours. And it turns out that 96% of clients are seeking legal guidance by using a search engine. So we know the heavy hitters out there in search engine space. We're looking at Google, we're looking at Yahoo, Bing. There's a couple of rogue folks that use a search engine called DuckDuckGo as well. But if you are a lawyer, it can be overwhelming to be able to deal with those complex case and issues, uh, but also keep an eye out what people are searching. So we have done that research for you. And as I was continuing to research and build today's uh, presentation for you, I came across the second stat. And it's the fact that 83% of clients read online reviews as the first step to finding a lawyer. 83%. So a vast majority of folks are on there researching, looking for the insights that other vendors have possibly or, or clients have given uh, on behalf of your law firm. Um, and one of the most important variables that you have control over is how to get more of those online reviews to circulate how wonderful of a lawyer you have been for your clients in the past. So we spend a lot of time working with law uh, lawyers uh, and law entities here at BirdEye. And one of the more common questions that we get is how can lawyers get new clients and build long lasting relationships? Many of you who are on the phone right now are probably asking yourself these questions day in and day out as you continue to differentiate from the competitors in your space. And our answer to that is, is relatively simple. It's actually a lot easier than you think it might be to get, get new clients or uh, work with existing clients. And that answer to that question is harnessing the power of your online reviews through your review management. So we're gonna spend the remaining 50 minutes of today's session talking about this concept of review management. So what is review management? At a really high level, review management is your ability to earn your client's loyalty. And it's imperative that you do that by responding to both positive and negative reviews online. The second component of review management is to set that realistic response ratio for your, your support team, your triage team who would be there to respond to reviews about every four hours um, and be able to articulate those responses as personable, respectful, and above all else, helpful. Since 83% of people are actually checking these reviews online, how you handle and or respond to these reviews is going to make or break you getting that case next on the docket. So the next question that uh, is begged to be answered is why are online reviews important for law firms? And to put it simply, online reviews are displayed in search engine results and they have a huge impact on your SEO at the local level. So SEO stands for search engine, engine optimization for those of you who aren't familiar with this space. But as I kicked off this presentation, I told you that the vast majority of your potential clients are already conducting their research by going online first and foremost. I know I, even though I didn't need legal services this morning, have used Google at least 15 times just trying to Google various um, details of my life, anything from like, what should I bring to my um, you know, dog's boarding? Should I bring her dog bread? How many meals should I pack? all the way through someone who might be a target audience for you asking, you know, what type of representation do I need for a, you know, 
minor fender bender? Or what type of representation do I need when trying to come up with a will or living testament? So local SEO, again, I'm going to dive in just a little bit uh, deeper into local SEO. So I apologize for any of you who aren't as nerdy as I am and get excited about this, but I promise you that it's well worth understanding this to help grow your law firm. But local SEO is a primary driver of that client acquisition. So if you haven't done this recently, please take a moment. I will give you permission to ignore me for the next few minutes uh, and go and Google your law firm and see what comes up. As a local searcher in your era looking for some sort of a legal representation, the first thing people are going to do is look for those law firms. And it's important to make sure that your law firm and your reputation that's online are what's displayed first. And because of uh, because there's a running adage, uh, at least in the marketing space, it's where does content go to die? It's on the second page of Google. And so your objective here with your local SEO is to end up on that first page of Google. And 55% of that people click on the first three organic results. So it's paramount for you to have your listing be on the, on the first page of Google, if not within the first three organic results. Since 90% of clients are using that law firm or choosing that law firm on that first um, page of search engine results, it is important to be found in that uh, and indexable in there. I will also say that a sustainable, a substantial portion of people are actually looking at um, the variables that Google starts to rank for algorithms. Um, so not everybody knows what's happening on the back end of Google's algorithm, um, but we do know that there is a large percentage, about 13% of them, are going into the 200 plus variables that factor into Google search engine algorithm. So if you ever wonder why a competitor may be ranked below you, um, hopefully they're not ranked above you, but if they are somewhere ranked near you, at least 13% of those have everything to do with your reputation online. So you can look at these three right here that we pointed out, the review quantity, in other words, how many reviews you have, the review velocity, or in other words, how frequent people are actually coming back and posting about your, uh, your firm, or the review diversity, in other words, how many different sites are your reviews being left uh, up on your law firm. Both Google and clients value online reviews, and as Google's algorithms start to become more and more sophisticated, Google is looking to serve content that meets their audience where it stands. So with 70% of clients willing to go to an attorney office that's less convenient, even if they have better reviews, and with 75% of clients seeking an attorney, attorney over the last year using online resources at some point, and compound both of those variables with the fact that 65% of clients found ratings to be moderately or extremely influential in a decision. If you're not managing your reputation online, suffice it to say you're losing out on huge opportunities. Keep in mind that there are different types of reviews left online. And the ones that get us nice and happy, get nice and enthusiastic are positive reviews. So getting the, the type of accolades like, oh, he's the best lawyer in town. He was all ears to my case, very patiently handled uh, my anxiety. I felt very fortunate that he handled my case. Um, but you should always take the time to respond to these reviews by kind professional words of gratitude saying thank you uh, and how delighted they were to be able to help you. So take that time to first off understand what people are saying about you and respond in a very personable way that makes your law firm approachable to any prospective clients you may have out there. And no matter what type of law practice you do have, whether it's a large firm or a one-man show, make sure that you spend that time responding to these positive reviews. That way clients are able to respond to you and know that you are responsive. Consider it an extension of how you'll practice law on their behalf. Some of my pro tips for responding to reviews, nice and concise. One, make sure that you take the time to thank someone for leaving their review, especially since they get no return from going online and leaving a review to the general public, but you yield the most amount of return from these reviews. Make sure that you do add a personal touch. Obviously, there's some client um, uh, lawyer privilege as well, so make sure that you have that personal touch of what it is possible, um, and always please express the hope that they are able to return, if not amplify, the success that you've brought to them in their life. 
Now we also embrace negative reviews here at BirdEye. We just call them bad reviews, but bad reviews have this ridiculous amount of opportunity for you to capitalize on them. Um, we can come back to Rocket Matter and teach about the service recovery paradox, but suffice it to say, you've probably seen a time or two where you've come across a negative review and have seen that law firms or you have seen other entities respond to these reviews. And in their response, you were able to glean insights into how valuable they were and how much they prioritized customer service or the customer's perspective. So a single negative review, nuts and bolts, can cost you up to 30 clients. Responding to the person that left a bad review can build that relationship as well as build trust with potential clients. Um, and even if a client is wrong, it's important not to get defensive, although we probably already know this, but it's important not to get defensive online as a public forum. And I want to reiterate that you could yield as many as 30 clients based on how you respond to a negative or bad review online. It's not a bad thing to get a negative review. So there are three things I want to highlight here when remembering how to respond to a bad review online. So this particular review left some uh, message, horrible experience. I sent so many emails, but no response. Now this law firm responded back by being very empathetic, very sympathetic, saying, I'm so sorry to hear that you were disappointed with your experience. However, if you check your email, there was an elaborate response um, with some timestamps there to be able to corroborate the um, statement. And let someone, uh, let me know if there's anything else I can help you with. You can get in touch with me with contact details directly to the lawyer who had tried to represent this client in this, this, this particular case. So why I love these were this review in particular is first and foremost, this person immediately apologized. And they didn't apologize for the fact that, uh, you know, this person, you know, didn't get the email or anything like that. It was just, I'm so sorry to hear that you were disappointed with your experience. You know, they took ownership over the experience and that makes all the difference in turning this negative situation into a positive one. Now, obviously there is a reasonable solution here and the solution was that they did in fact send an email, but make sure that when you are responding to the negative reviews that you take something tangible over into this response. And then of course, if you do have a personal contact with the person who has left a negative review, make sure you follow up with that review online. It's a great opportunity for you to either try to attempt another email send or get in touch with them via telephone to just try to address the manner on a more personal level. With the service recovery paradox, you actually will yield much more loyal customers by responding to a negative situation, um, not just for the 30 potential new clients that this will yield for you, but also by um, making things right with the individual with whom uh, you've had some sort of a bad experience. Now that, now that we've understood the concept of review management, we're bought into the fact that it's important to be able to manage your reviews online, understanding that if you don't have reviews, how to get some more reviews, or if you have negative reviews, being able to take those negative reviews and flip them around to be positive ones. But one of the more important components of reviews is being able to drive that client experience and improve your law firm with the reviews that you have gotten. What I love about reviews is that it affords you the ability to get a deep understanding of your clients wants and needs and you can send the survey out just by a very simple how is your experience this open-ended question leaves for area of opportunity for you to glean insights into what went well for your client and what areas of improvement that you can work on to enhance the overall experience. My biggest um, feedback for most people who go through this process is really just to sit back and listen to those critical touch points. Um, when you sit back and listen, you've afforded yourself the ability to digest and understand their feedback. So if you really are parsing through what people are really saying you and then put that into action, you're really showing that you do care about the people uh, whose uh, cases you are representing. I always love this quote by Henry Ford. You know, if you ask your customers what they wanted, they would have said they wanted a faster horse, which we all know Henry Ford actually uh, invented the automobile. And so if you don't spend the time listening to that feedback and collecting that feedback, you're gonna find yourself in a situation where you've gone too far down the road of building something that people don't actually want. Now this is the 
the client experience feedback loop. And it's important to recognize this as you're going through uh, and, and deciding to partner with a prospective client. It's the fact that you're going to have these phases and evolution of that experience. So the first thing that's going to happen is the client is going to, you're going to sit down and have some sort of a consultation with them. And you can ask to re re uh, review your consultation with them as well giving the general public insights into how well that consultation was at which time you can then publish that feedback and push it to a separate platform that is tailored and designed for law firms and then you can also start to monitor those client insights and then have your legal firm team be able to bring that feedback back in house either shift and or change some elements or continue to double down on the elements that worked really well to continue to build that experience and then rinse and repeat this entire process as you get new clients or maybe as you represent the same client multiple times and multiple touch points this client experience feedback loop helps to differentiate between those isolated incidents uh, and maybe potentially identify some recurring trends that happen throughout your client representation but it also helps you to retain those existing clients um, and especially with their feedback in such a public venue, you'll be able to acquire net new ones. Again, I mentioned about the time sensitivity with responding to these reviews, um, but being able to address any and all issues immediately really makes a difference in your responsiveness and how you are perceived as an authority figure uh, and as a potential legal representative of someone who's in a, a crisis situation. So if you are gonna be able to respond, in this case, this person was able to respond within 70 minutes of someone posting a response, even if it was a bad review, this law firm was able to respond within that 70 minute mark and also make apologies and make amends and, uh, or attempt to make some sort of an amends to remedy that experience. So being able to leverage these real-time insights, being able to demonstrate that you are responsive, that you are on top of the communication that is coming in from all angles, from all of your potential clients or prospective clients, this is giving your potential clients the perspective that you are um, able and dedicated to be working to them and help address their needs. Key is to respond back as quickly as possible. Now, this client experience feedback loop will afford you the opportunity to test and even alter some operations that you may have in-house at your law firm, um, which will affect the overall client experience. But that also allows you, once you've implemented those changes, to look for ways to differentiate yourself between those isolated incidents and recurring trends that may happen operationally within your law firm. And then, of course, as the loop continues around, you want to be able to lean into the insights that you've found about those recurring trends, those recurring instances, look for the implementation, success and failures, but then you use that to retain existing clients or acquire net new ones. It's also important too, if you do have happy customers, which many of you will, your client's voices that are happy, that are really reporting the success that you've brought to them in their personal lives, those can be amplified and be leveraged to acquire more clients and more cases for your law firm as well. So in this particular case, this person was able to leave their review and then be able to auto share it to three platforms, which are the three most important platforms for user generated content. Making sure that you are using your search engines again uh, and le uh, using your, your positive reviews as a marketing engine for your business. Uh, many law firms don't have the resources inside. If you are a one-stop shop for all things legal, you're also trying to grow your, grow your install base of clients while also building a firm out from uh, underneath you. So you are your own marketer, you are your own CEO, uh, you are also potentially your own janitor. So let your customers do the marketing for you um, by leaving positive reviews on your various platforms. Another way to promote your positive reviews, some really quick low hanging fruit is to be able to share these testimonials on your website, be able to promote these through social media, and of course, through the business listings that you may have, which we will get to in just a second, the right places to be able to post your business. Also taking a look at potential clients, these clients are more likely to trust you with their issues if they can see proof that your brand's quality and reliability are existent in these reviews. 
So again, these are just markers. These are not you marketing your own law firm. In fact, these are your customers, your satisfied customers who are marketing your law firm on your behalf. When clients discover your company alongside detailed information provided by those real clients, they're more likely to trust you with the issues that they have um, with their legal representation. So on a more mechanical level, how do online reviews work for law firms? Online reviews, and I mentioned just a few moments ago, they're a form of user-generated content, or UGC, that your clients can share on public sites such as Facebook, Google, um, and there are also legal, represent, uh, legal platforms on which people can leave those reviews. And these sites are typically structured uh, as open-ended feedback, so you can just ask a general, broad, open-ended question, allowing the ability to rate someone from stars one through five. And after a client posts a review for a law firm, it's really tied to your public profile and visit, visible to anybody who can access the public profile forum. So again, that would be the, the Googles, the Facebooks, um, the uh, Yahoos even. You can see all of your star ratings, you can see the percentage of people who have left you a review, and you could also see the response to the open-ended question that they have put out here into the abyss of the internet. And again, as I've said, any potential prospect or client who wants to see these review sites can go and review them. And as we've already learned at the beginning of this presentation, a vast majority of your prospective clients are going and doing their research and due diligence to find the right law firm for their needs. And in most cases, reviews can be only be removed by the review site itself if they violate the site's policies. I have come across the rare occasion where there is someone challenging a review left online about their law firm. These can be removed. Um, you'll just need to make sure that they, uh, the removal is contingent upon the violation of a site's policies. So now that we've understood where exactly reviews fit in the grander scheme of being able to secure new cases, secure new clients for your law firm, now we need to understand how to ask for these reviews from our existing clients. The most important place to start when deciding what reviews you want to get is where you want these reviews to be published. And so the first step is to focus on the sites that are most important to your law firm. So obviously some of the bigger, more media platforms like Google, Facebook, Yelp, are going to be the places you'll want to start asking for those reviews. These are just generally speaking where your end consumer is hanging out natively. People are going on Google on a regular basis. Facebook reported that they are like 3 billion users per uh, around the world, 3 billion users. Um, so it's really important for you to, to meet people where they are on their native platforms. For Google, it has a really extensive collection of lawyers and legal reviews, uh, as well as reviews of law firms. So with a verified listing on Google+, meaning you've gone in and claimed your business on Google+, you can then start to attract those new cl clients by soliciting new reviews from your existing clients and bolstering your five-star reputation um, and continuing to manage your reviews as they come in through this platform. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about how this helps bolster your search engine optimization as well. Secondarily, Facebook with uh, 1.4 billion monthly active users, that's going to put your law firm in front of a target audience of potential clients and or influencers of your potential clients. So clients who may not necessarily know about your law firm, but maybe know a friend or a family member who has leaned into your law firm for representation at a pre previous date can recommend your law firm to someone who's in need of assistance. Now, Yelp is another review site, probably more commonly known for people who are upset about some sort of a situation that had unfolded at a restaurant, but Yelp is actually a really great go-to site for all kinds of reviews. There is its own category specifically for lawyers as well, and that can be found under professional services. If you go to Yelp, search the category for lawyers, it can be found under professional services. Clients are frequently browsing and reading about law firm reviews online as well before contacting, so I would recommend checking out what's going over on at Yelp about your law firm. Now, obviously, there are review sites dedicated just to the vertical that they support. Some of the ones that we prefer at BirdEye are Avo, Lawyer Rating, Lawyers.com, and Customer Lobby. 
despite the fact that there are lots of other platforms out there, these are the ones that we've seen take off with the most traction around customer reviews. Now, when it comes to Avo, um, it's the industry-focused review site. Uh, it does tend to lead the pack in terms of reviews. Organically speaking, this tends to come up more frequently in searches. Um, and it's an online legal service marketplace. So it has everything a person who might be needing uh, legal services would go for, looking for ratings, reviews, even the disciplinary records for the lawyers. Uh, it is categorized by state, um, as well as having lawyers submitted legal guides as well. Um, as of late, if I'm not mistaken, it's grown to about 7.6 million searchable legal questions as well. So people can go onto this platform and start to look for some legal advice. Um, as far as we understand, Avo has claimed that about 97% of US lawyers are already using this platform. So if you're not already using it, please jump on there, make sure that you've polished up your business and have been able to be found by people looking for legal services. Another platform that we come across frequently is Lawyers.com. It's pretty straightforward, but according to the company, about 34 million people are searching for legal assistance through this site. Um, and it's happening pretty much on an annual basis that that 34 million people are searching. So the site is collecting, again, again, it's a review site, so it's collecting that client review, but it's also looking at peer ratings as well, which is a different and unique variable against which to measure the reputation of your law firm. So when you are asking for reviews, we've been able to boil this down into four tips, four tips to ask for your existing clients for reviews. So I'll go into each one of these individually, but here are the four tips at a high level. We're gonna make it authentic. We're gonna ask for that review as quickly as possible. We're gonna try to make this as seamless as possible, not just for us, but for our clients who are go doing us a favor by taking the time out of their day to leave a review. And we're also looking for consistency here. So the first thing we wanna talk about is make it authentic. So we don't ever want to offer incentives in exchange for a review. Consumers are becoming more and more conscientious of the fact that reviews being left online are actually reviews that are being paid for. So they are starting to become wary of reviews that feel a little too fluffy or even companies that have only positive reviews. I mentioned earlier that bad reviews or negative reviews are good, and someone is going to be looking for a healthy balance of people who have objective feedback to provide about your law firm. So make it authentic. And that means that leads to unbiased or insecure reviews that don't reflect your client's experience. Or um, there might be some sort of a, a situation where there's been uh, a post that's been permitted by review sites. So keep the authenticity up and don't ever bribe someone to leave a review, especially monetary bribes uh, in exchange for a five-star review. Now, timing is key when it comes to a review, especially if you do have a uh, happy client on your hand. So seven out of every 10 clients will leave a review for a law firm if they've been asked. Now, the problem is most people forget to ask people to leave a review for them. So take the time to go in, and, and there are services out there that allow their clients to receive a review through automated. I know I personally have received uh, SMS met messages from uh, businesses that I've gone to asking for my feedback on my experience with them. So there are platforms, BirdEye does provide this service as well, but there are platforms out there that allow you to ask for those reviews and ask for them in a timely fashion. So as soon as we have that touch point, maybe after that consultation or after a case is done being represented, ask for that feedback. And of course, you want them to remember their experience and give that honest review. So don't shirk away from anybody who has some tough feedback for us to ingest. It's only going to make your law firm stronger, better, and faster. I also mentioned that we want to make this as seamless as possible. So we have to meet our clients where they are. Uh, I'm sitting here with my colleague, Andy. I know that Lisa just dialed us into this and I guarantee all three of us have our mobile phones in our pockets right now. So with 91% of adults keeping their mobile phone within the arm's reach about 24 seven, my phone never leaves my site and about 87, 90, 98% of us using text messages to reach uh, one another. Uh, and with 90% of messages being read within the first three minutes of receipt, it's important for you to reach people where they are and use mobile messaging to target them for that feedback. 
You can also reach people via email. The BirdEye platform, as do others, have the ability for you to use uh, email as a means for gathering this feedback and allowing people to leave reviews online for your law firm. But your review request messages should be compact, compatible across all platforms. So if you have opted to send an email or if you've opted to use a mobile device, make sure that everything is optimized for the device for which you've sent this review. And the most important component of making this seamless for everybody is to involve as few steps as possible. I advise and we advise our, our law firms here at BirdEye to ask for a five-star rating and then maybe just an open text field asking someone an open-ended question much like the one that's displayed on our screen here. How was your experience? Leave it open-ended. Make it easy for people to give you the information that you need to improve your client experience, but also give them a platform to be able to help you generate net new clients for your law firm. And last, be consistent. So your review generation strategy does have to be ongoing. Your reputation online is a living, breathing entity. So make sure that you are consistently asking for these reviews. I've highlighted down here at the bottom the timestamps on these two reviews. And based on consumer reporting, we have found that a review that is older than three months is no longer considered relevant by someone who is on the receiving end of that review. So in other words, the more frequently that you are having people leave reviews for you, preferably within the last two to three months, the more consistent stream of fresh reviews that are available to prove your credibility to potential clients. So the consistency is key and frequency is key as well. So in conclusion, we want to emphasize that, you know, with online reviews, people are spending, you know, that time searching online. In fact, 96% of people are searching online for uh, legal representation. And 83% of those people who are searching online are reading those reviews. Those reviews are heavily influencing those, their decisions to want to partner with a law firm like yours. It's important to choose an online review management platform that fits your client base and law firm business model as well. So be sure that your review generation approach fits the client habits and that your staff is prepared to efficiently manage incoming, incoming client feedback. When you do get that feedback, make sure to collect and really truly listen to that feedback. Please respond in real time to those critical touch points. Make sure that you are representing how responsive your law firm is by responding within the hour if you can within the, two, for the first two hours of leaving that review. Make sure you're also maximizing the marketing power of those happy clients. So anytime someone does leave a positive review for you, feel free to share it on your social networks. Feel free to share this out to any prospective clients as a form of validating the level of expertise you're bringing to their clients' needs. And of course, always continuously imp improve that client feedback loop. So look for areas of opportunity to improve that client experience. Take the feedback that your clients are leaving about you online and use them to make incremental progress in improving the overall experience, which ultimately will yield more cases for you and more casework. So I wanna open things up and make sure that if any questions have come through that we have time to answer them with enough detail and specificity as possible. Um, so I will go out and see if anybody has any questions. Hi, it's Lisa again. Just so you guys are aware, if there are any questions that you may have, uh, on the right side of your screen, there might be a GoToWebinar control panel. And there's a section specifically for questions. So you'll actually be able to type in whatever questions you may have in that little um, in that little box over there, and we'll be able to see them and answer them. And in the meantime, just so you're aware, if you happen to have signed in late or uh, if you had any audio problems, a recording of the CLE will be sent to your email tomorrow afternoon along with the slide deck. Um, so let's see. Um, hey, MK, somebody's asking, can you give me an example of what a response to a bad review would sound like? Yeah, so it would depend on the review itself. Um, if this person is feeling brave and wants to toss up maybe a bad review or a negative review up to the masses, uh, we can curate a response together as a group to that particular review. 
If not, then we can go into some of the best practices. Let's see. Um, going through some more questions. We have another question. Um, I just saw that I have a star rating on fattorneys.com. I've never heard of this company. It gives me a 2.6. I don't know who started these reviews. There are no comments. All of my other reviews are five. What can I do? So when you say, what can I do? Are we looking for a way to respond this re to this review? And I can also go into the chat too. My recommendation would be, let's embrace, um, I, I'm not as familiar with fattorneys.com, um, but my recommendation would be to embrace this negative review as an opportunity to show the integrity that you have and the professionalism that you have in this space. So I would take this review, tackle it head on, and I would thank that person for you know, taking the time out of their day to leave this review. And again, acknowledge and make that apology for that negative review. So say, you know, I'm sorry to hear that you were disappointed with that experience. If they've given you enough detail to be able to respond to that, you know, provide some sort of a reasonable solution if you can. Some people just give you nothing. Some people just say like this person, like horrible experience, so many emails, no response. This, there's not a lot of detail here. Fortunately, this law firm was on top of that review and we're able to give some sort of an insight to say, actually, we did try to get in touch with you, um, but you know what? It sounds like email may not be the right modality of communication for us. Here's my phone number. Feel free to get in touch with me. Let's see. Um... Alrighty then. What if the person didn't leave a comment? Would you recommend that uh, they re uh, they do some research to see what kind of site this is, to see if these particular reviews are indeed coming from actual clients? Could that be something that a lawyer can possibly contest if they have a negative review on a site, if it's a false review? So if it's a review with no text, meaning someone has just left you a one star review, um, my recommendation would be do a little research, see if you can understand who the person is that left that review um, and reach out to that person on, offline, meaning don't reach out to them in this public forum. Reach out to them and ask them for some feedback on the experience for how you could have managed the situation differently for them. If it isn't a, a completely anonymous piece of, of review uh, information, you could report this as negative uh, review or, or um, as a as something you would want to violate the, the policy, their terms of service in there. Um, but again, I wouldn't burn too many calories off of something like that. Most consumers are looking for an unbiased opinion. And if you do have some negative reviews, it's not the end of the world. It's actually showing that you are, uh, you know, you, you can't be everything to everyone. Then people will really appreciate that authenticity in your ability to respond to those reviews. All right, excellent. I had another question. I wasn't quite sure. Um, there was a question about incorporating the reviews with your online marketing. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. We at Bird, I do this all of the time. In fact, most of the emails that we send out, we don't really write about ourselves. We let our customers do the writing for us. So we may take a picture or a screenshot of the reviews that our customers have left about us and use that as a way to uh, show people and demonstrate the power that BirdEye has to help them grow their business. We consider BirdEye and we consider the reviews, uh, the ability to manage your reviews and aggregate and or request those reviews as a, an accelerant to an overarching digital marketing strategy. So if you're doing the baseline, you're writing blog posts, you have a website, you've optimized that website for search engines, leaving your customer testimonials on your website is an incredibly easy way to validate the authority and validate the um, about the um, insights that you'll be able to provide to your clients. BirdEye does have the ability to embed your customer reviews through a widget. You can take that and embed that on your website. If you go to birdeye.com, you'll see the widget in action at the very bottom with our own customers leaving that testimonial. Awesome. MK, here's an interesting question. Is there such a thing as having too many reviews? 
That's an awesome question. We have not found there to be any sort of correlation between too many reviews and someone's rankings dropping organically, nor have we found someone who has too many reviews and um, their, their overall customer base growth starting to be on the decline. So there's no there's no direct way of saying the um, the number of reviews is what makes you better, stronger, faster in the eyes of search engines or in the eyes of the consumer, but really what it comes down to is the quality of those reviews. So you can have a ton of reviews, but if all of those reviews land you at a two star rating or a one star rating, obviously the instinct is going to tell you that no one is going to want to partner with your law firm for their legal representation. So the quality, the more quality that you get from your reviews, meaning people are leaving nice detail, like this is a, an example of a bad review, but because they're not really leaving much detail. But if someone is leaving a lot more detail in their review, especially I like this review of the positive review because it's pointing out what the law lawyer's strengths are, their ability to be patient, their ability to stay level headed in a very volatile situation um, and their ability to just kind of have empathy during something that may have been a trying time is actually demonstrating a lot more than the legal representation that this person may have provided in court. So again, I would go quality over, over quantity any day, um, but there is no such thing as having too many reviews in our eyes at BirdEye. All right, excellent. Um, let's see, one more question just popped up. Do you have to ask permission to use a review? For example, a client writes you an email and includes a line about how great you are. Can we just use that sentence on our website? And how much of the reviewer's info should we add if we put it on the website? Oh, that's a good question. And we see this a lot. And I always abide by like the journalistic rule here. Um, if someone is going to give you a quote, if you're a journalist, if you're someone's going to give you a quote to use in some sort of an article, um, as a reader of that article, I'm going to want to know whose quote this was. I'm going to want to have that information. And, and as such, a reporter is going to ask if they, that person can be, quote, on the record. So the same journalistic parameters are also fall in this jurisdiction of online reviews. So if someone does leave you a great quote, they've actually opened up the opportunity for you to send them a request for a real piece of feedback on Google, on Facebook, on Avo. Um, and just that's just a great segue from this like native digital environment into a, a much broader spectrum. All right, excellent. Um, so I think we're winding down. I don't see any more questions left in the sidebar, but uh, in the meantime, why don't we go ahead and skip to the very end um, of the slideshow. We have the course number for everybody who have, you know, you all, all been so patient and, you know, we're really excited about, you know, having BirdEye help present with us because, you know, marketing and just that particular aspect of running a law firm we found to be uh, one of the areas that are obviously lacking. You know, lawyers don't go to school to know how to market things. Their their purpose is to, you know, practice law. So, oh, we got another question over here. Let me take a look at this. Whoop, where's my mouse? Where's my mouse? All right. Um, I don't know if this is a question, but they mentioned TV advertising, a link to the website, and digital display ads. Can you include any of the quotes in these particular uh, avenues? That's a gr that's also a great question. Like, how can you repurpose this user's generated content and put it into different forums, different modalities to expand that reach? So some of these platforms, you're going to want to look at their terms of service, but some of these platforms do allow you to extrapolate the insights that they've been given um, and use them in other platforms. Um, so, for example, BirdEye helps aggregate all of your reviews in one uh, business profile page. And because of the terms of service for the platforms that we use, we are able to pull them from those platforms and aggregate them externally into another site. So suffice it to say that if the terms of service of the platform that someone is leaving a review on says that this is being used for general consumption, this quote may be you know, used in other places, other formats. I know Google does have that addendum to their terms of service. Um, you could repurpose and reuse that person's uh, testimonial to help represent your law firm. That said, you probably know the person who has left that 
positive review about you online. And I actually think a much better way to be able to take that person's uh, opinion about your law firm is to fold them into some of that nonlinear advertising you may do on television. Uh, and ask them to jump in, maybe be used in the video with you and provide that testimonial live for you rather than just have a, poll, a quote pulled from Google, Yahoo, Avvo, Facebook, et cetera. I think that's a much better way to lean into that happy client of yours. All right, excellent. Um, let's see, no other questions so far. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of end it here for today. We're ending about five uh, minutes early for everybody uh, out there in the, on the interwebs. If you do have any questions, MK, how can, uh, how can people get a hold of you? So as you can see here, I have my email address. Uh, we've actually just tried to make it life a lot easier for everybody and just made it mk at birdeye.com. So you could email me there if you want to. Um, I am on the interwebs, as you put it, Lisa, through these various <laughs> channels of LinkedIn and Twitter as well. So feel free to fire a tweet over to me. Um, but email is probably going to be the fastest way for me to respond to you and help you work through some of your reputation management um, needs. Excellent. MK, thank you so much for hosting today. I hope all of you out there were able to take away some valuable information about your online reputation through today's CLE. Uh, on your screen, your Florida Bar CLE course number is 3175. And again, you will receive the recording of this CLE as, um, along with the slide deck tomorrow around noon. So make sure to check your email. And MK, thank you so much one more time. Very appreciative to have you here. Of course, it was my pleasure. Thank you so much for hosting us today. We really appreciate it. No problem. Thank you all, have a great day.